Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this week's episode, we're traveling to Georgia to meet John and Finn and take a tour of their beloved cabin homestead. This couple converted a shed into a full-time tiny home and they have spent the last 12 years evolving the space. They'll talk about choosing a shed suitable for full-time living, show us their beautiful greenhouse kitchen, and take us around their self-sustaining property. But this isn't the first time we featured John and Finn on this channel. We also did a tour of their tiny fire truck themed tiny house, which you can check out via the link in the description. And while you're at it, be sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. everyone, my name is Finn. And my name is John. We are here on our beloved cabin, Homestead and Stay. Finn and I met uh, over 14 years ago. She was living in London and I was living in South Florida. During our first two years of flying back and forth um, across the Atlantic, we ended up spending time on a narrow boat. Over in the uh, canals of England, and we realized that we enjoyed being in close proximity of each other. We like that small space. Two years later, she proposed to me, asked me to marry her. One of the terms, condition, poquos, <laughs> rules that I had to uh, adhere to to accept her proposal was that we leave the big cities of Miami and London, we move out in the country somewhere, and we build our own small house. That was our motivation to get started. We decided that we were going to do a shed conversion. We wanted to have something already dried in and then we could just do the inside ourselves. We picked this company, Dirksen Portable Buildings, for a couple of reasons. One, I really liked the way it was built. It was built solid. We were talking about buying a shed that we were going to build into our forever home. And I wanted to make sure my new bride, who was considered enough to ask me to marry her, that I was going to be considered enough to make sure that she had a solid roof over her head. We like the lofted barn design, we like the high ceiling, but the quality and the construction was all combined into the perfect storm, if you will, of something that was uh, positive for us. We spent $6,500 $6, for our empty shed shell. The design that um, I like to go for, it will be something that you don't feel so close in. The reality is, is this house has gone through a metamorphosis three, four times over the past 12 years. So many. But the very first conversion for us to move in took us a year. more than a year, just slightly more than a year. And we did all the work, pretty much all the work ourselves. We have, living with us here, 31 cats, four dogs, <laughs> two pigs, six goats, 20 some chickens, we lost count, and uh, four ducks, and a partridge in a pear tree. Welcome to our beloved cabin. We're here on our 16 acre homestead in middle Georgia out near Lake Oconee. We started off with the Dirks and Portable Building, 12 by 30 double lofted barn. We have 304 square feet on the interior of the wood structure. And with the additions of our greenhouse bathroom and greenhouse kitchen, we're just at about 500 square feet of covered space. We've got a garden here. This is Finn's main garden. She likes a garden that's close to the house because as she put it, a garden that's out of sight is a garden that's out of mind. We also have gardens going around the side here. This is our version of permaculture. She'll throw collards in here. She's got squashes growing here. She's got bok choy growing here. It's a menagerie, a cornucopia, if you will. That's actually applicable when it comes to a garden, isn't it? This is such a big asset um, uh, here on the, home, on the homestead. It processes our sewage, but it also creates a biogas. We create the gas, we use it for cooking, so we're not propane reliant. And, uh, and also it creates this amazing nutrient-rich liquid fertilizer that we use in all of our gardens and on our crops. 
So a lot of people ask about water. Two things we have is we've got a thousand gallons of rainwater collection. Well, how do you pump it into the house? Well, the pressure works just fine. Here's the water line that goes into the kitchen. We've never had a drought where we don't have water pressure um, uh, or not enough water from this. Um, we have another 500 gallon system over there. We also, when we bought one of the adjacent lots, it came with a well, uh, a drilled well on it. And we pipe that over here for the garden hoses that we use for um, our gardens and for our uh, chickens and livestock. So water here is never an issue for us. When people think about going off grid, some of the first things they think about is shelter, water, food, electricity. Absolutely. The one thing we didn't think about was what do we do with our human waste? So we didn't have the home biogas system originally. So what we did for a long time and what we still do um, because we have composting toilets throughout the property is we do humanure composting. Yes, I said humanure. We can bring the camera in, it doesn't look gross at all. We dump inside of here human waste and organic material. It's in here for about uh, nine, 10 months, and then it goes into here for about um, eight months. And after about an 18 month process, it breaks down and it becomes soil. Just like when you do compost, the two big garden beds that we have all the vegetables and stuff growing in, it came from this composted soil that we create out here. So here we are in the back of the cabin. What we built a long time ago is what we call the catio. We built the catio for a couple of reasons. One, as we run the animal sanctuary, rescue sanctuary out here, felines are the number one drop off and rescue. They come and hang out in here for a week or two until they're spayed, neutered, and this is where their intake occurs. But it's just a little area, it's a 12 by 12 enclosure we built, and it just gives them a little recreation area, a little area to hang out and play, a little area to chill out. What folks really ask us a lot about is what's going on inside. So come on for the real show. Honey, I'm home. Okay. <laughs> So when we did this ceiling, we sheetrocked this originally. We, we stuffed it full of R13 insulation and then we sheetrocked it. And it was a mess. It wasn't pretty at all. So we dumpster dived this quarter inch plywood and we hand cut it. That was just such a pain in the butt. Doing, but it came out looking good in the end. These were barn doors. Uh, these were just raw doors that were in here. So what we did was we insulated them in Again, cutting uh, plywood and uh, uh, filling it in. And then we put these Anderson windows in here. We found these used windows. And if you're gonna do a shed conversion, if you get one of these lofted barn style sheds, these side walls are really short. So you can't put conventional sized doors in here. So what we've done for years is we kind of uh, mix match, patch together our own solar system. This year we upgraded to a um, EcoFlow. The main reason why we went with this is um, super compact, very easy to use. And the whole distribution panel, the uh, DC breakers and the uh, AC side breakers was super easy to take out our old breaker box, uh, just regular household breaker box. So we were able to utilize our eight solar panels. We were able to keep those as part of the system. People wanna know, why do you sleep downstairs? We used to sleep up in the loft. For over 10 years, we slept in the loft. I'm in my 60s. It just started becoming a little bit of a challenge going up and down the ladder uh, in the middle of the night. Now we made all these little cubbies right here and there's storage under here. The mattress is full size? Yes, it's full size. So, and it's great for us. It comes in handy when you got a little teeny wife, uh, it, it's perfect. Finn designs everything. She comes up with the interior decor. She figures everything out. For wood burning stove, we got a, a Dutch West high efficiency catalytic converter wood burning stove. These are like $2,500 stoves and we found it for like 500 bucks. They had used it for one season and then they bought a new house and this wouldn't fit in the new house. So we got a great deal on it. 
The thing we like about this is, is we can fill it full of wood and when we go to bed at night and in the morning, it's still going. It's great. The greenhouse kitchen, it's Finn's idea, Finn's creation, Finn's design. You decided you wanted a greenhouse kitchen. Well, first of all, I think the idea come from, I never liked the kitchen that we had before. So I kind of like want to knock that down and add something because I feel like it's so dark in there and I want to bring more nature light in. So, and then we decided, you know what? Go big or go home. Our cabin is 304 square feet and with the greenhouse additions, we're around 500 square feet. People ask, doesn't it get hot here? The reality is, is really not too bad. We let the top get covered with leaves during the summer. So we have all that shade of, of here. We have cross vents across the top. It goes all the way through. And we typically have mild summers and winters uh, here in this area. In the heat of the summer, when all the breeze and everything is going on, we'll sit in a chair over there next to the koi pond and feel the coolness of the water, especially when the fountain's bubbling and everything. It actually generates a coolness over there. A big falsehood, a big misconception about these shed conversions and greenhouses is humidity and mold and moisture. And the reality is, as long as you have air current, it's a non-issue. We've never had mold issue. We've never had a humidity problem. We've never had a moisture problem in this house. It's really amazing at uh, what a great environment this is. Finn found these Hoosier cabinets a long time ago. These are the only things that have um, closed doors to them and it's because it came with them. All the other cabinetry and everything in here pretty much is open faced, the storage and everything. Finn found this. It's an old Windsor, way back in the day, iron gas stove. It's converted to propane now. And we have a propane tank, which sits in that corner over there, a little 20 pound propane can tank. It runs off of it. People ask us, why do we have such a big sink? Um, our response to that is, is why not? It's a seven foot commercial grade sink. It gave us extra countertop space. We love it. And then another unique feature about our sink and about our bathtub is they're all plumbed into the gardens on the other side here. So we don't use detergent soaps, we don't use chemical soaps, we use um, Castile or Myers um, soaps, and all of that goes into the gardens. So these roof panels are a polycarbonate panel. They're hailproof. We also like these because they don't yellow, they don't fade, they're UV protective. The kitchen, garden, and koi pond. When Finn proposed this concept, like usual, I had a lot of problems with her design. And as usual, she totally proved me wrong and I love it. And this whole concept is about, you know, be able to grow food all year round. One other thing that I would like to add is how convenient it is for you to just pick your veggies and then just walk a couple of steps and cook them. And with the koi pond concept, I just want to throw in the surprise element into that because it's fun. Why not? Oh, and the cat That's love it. Too. The cat likes to sit there and then just stare at the fish all day long. There we go. This our lockers. Finn found the lockers, I think on Facebook Marketplace. Each one is used for different things. They're great storage and we damaged this wall pretty bad at one time. We removed shelves when the kitchen was in here and Finn was not in the mood to wait for me to patch and seal and sand and paint the wall. And she said, put the lockers against it. So we had a couple of guys come over. They helped me because these things are heavy and we put them against it. And that was that. John like his office here because he can open the whole side door here and see this why we, you know, why he's working, which is his favorite thing to do. So we do different workshops. We do a workshop on, on solar configuration. We go over human newer composting. We go over creating biogas for cooking fuel. This next workshop, we're doing a shed to home conversion 101 class so we can show what we look for in a, uh, in a shed before we, for our conversion. 
in 2016, we started organizing tiny house festivals. In fact, we've done 29 tiny house festivals, all of different states, but primarily here in the Southeast. We have right now eight short-term tiny house rentals on the property. Each houses that we have here, I give it a different theme. I like to host people. I like to wait on them. I like to make food for them. I like to do stuff like that. So those are all the different ways that we uh, generate income. It's not one avenue stream. Shall we move on to the walkthrough closet? The walkthrough closet. We rotate our clothes. So this is our winter clothes right now. And these are all stuffed with summer clothes, socks, underwear. Um, uh, and then when uh, summer comes along, summer clothes comes out, winter clothes get all stuffed in there. So they kind of rotate uh, back and forth. So we're here in our greenhouse bathroom. We built this in 2019. Um, uh, originally our bathroom was what is now our walkthrough closet. Another one of Finn's ideas. Um, and I think the what sparked the idea for me would be this bathtub here. I think we had this um, cloth wood tub for quite a while and I have a thing for a cloth wood tub. I was like, it is so romantic. We have to put it somewhere that we can just show off. This is in a nice shady area of the yard, so it doesn't get hot in here really at all during the summer. So here in the greenhouse bathroom, because of space and because of just how we live, we don't have a sink. Um, if we wanna wash our hands in the bathroom, we got the tub right here. Um, we also have the sink out in the kitchen. We have a on-demand tankless hot water heater uh, from a company called Precision Temp. So we have hot water in here, we have the tub. In regards to the toilet, over the years, we've had all sorts of different composting toilets. But for us here, we talked about the home biogas system that we have uh, off to the side outside the kitchen. We flush directly into that. And the way we do that is with a home biogas bio toilet. It looks and operates a lot like a uh, marine toilet. A question we get asked a lot, you have no privacy. In, a, in this glass room. Well, I don't need privacy here. We uh, live in the woods. This is more like our sanctuary. This is what it's about, you and me. Right. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see another episode featuring John and Finn and their tiny fire truck themed tiny house, make sure you check out the link in the description and I will see you soon with another tiny house tour.